Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm taking a look at my two favorite products, that is Luminar Neo and On One Photo Raw. And the great thing is with the most recent update to On One Photo Raw on a Mac, I can now use Luminar Neo as a true plugin. So I get a fully integrated plugin workflow where I can start in On One, go to Neo round trip, back to On One, and finish my edit. I love using these two products together. They're very complementary. Each of them has incredible strengths at different things. And while, of course, they both edit photos, so there's some overlap, I really feel that they are, as I said, very complementary. You can do things really well in each app that you can't necessarily do the same uh, in the other app. So I'm gonna walk through an example workflow of kind of how I approach that and what tools I may take advantage of in each app to really get the best out of my edit. Let's take a look at it. This is a photo from Iceland from a couple of years ago. It's a raw file, of course. And even though you can see up here, it was shot at ISO 100 and it was tripod mounted. When I zoom in, you can actually see a little bit of noise here. Uh, and it's not super crisp and that sort of thing. And so what I wanna do is basically just take advantage of the powerful raw processing in on one specifically around denoise. That's one of the great things that they did is they have this noise and sharpening section and no noise AI, which is frankly world-class noise reduction for raw files. So even though it's tripod mounted ISO 100, it still has a little bit of noise in it. So now when I zoom in, you can see this photo is a little bit crisper than it was before and a little bit less noisy. Let me show you the before and after. It's not a massive amount, but you can see there's a little bit of noise reduction being applied. And of course, this person looks a little bit sharper as well. Let me show you that. You can see it's basically a better quality raw file. Let me turn off that preview. Now, of course, you can adjust noise reduction, sharpening, and things like that to your liking. I might pull down the detail and the sharpening a little bit and maybe bump the luminance noise reduction to 100 and that's the first thing I like to do. Now, the second thing is they have amazing lens correction that's built in. With that most recent update, they even added more to this. So my lens correction is automatic. There's the before and there's the after. And if you click into the details, you can see it picked up. This was a Sam Yang, a third party lens, 14 millimeter F 2.8. So it picked that up. That's been applied. I like it. But one of the other great things that On One does is this transform tool, which allows you to fix the verticals in several different ways. My preference is keystoning. So I like to come in here, and in this case, and this is not a tutorial on how keystoning works, I'm gonna tilt that slightly to the right, and if I hit enter, you can see it basically tilts the photo. So if I show you the before and the after, it's a little bit straighter, a little bit better overall. You can see this corner is slightly cut off because I did tilt the photo, which means I need to come in and apply a crop. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'll go with a 16 by nine here, pull that in. Let me adjust this accordingly. I think something about that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and hit return and apply my crop. So I've basically done some of what I call the utility parts of editing a raw file. Denoise, lens correction, fixing the verticals, cropping. Now I can go into tone and color and do some additional ad adjustments or enhancements if I like to. In this case, I might lift the midtones and shadows just a little bit. And there I've got a base photo that I really like. This is taking advantage of all that raw processing power, denoise, lens correction, verticals, things like that in on one. But now I wanna send it over to Luminar Neo because Neo, I love Neo, as you know, it's got so many powerful tools for color control, light control, things like that. And I wanna take advantage of some of that. So I'll click on layer and go to filters and under Skylum software, I will go to Luminar Neo and it will activate Neo as a plugin within on one. You can see it says plugin started and prior to this update, it, it used to just hang there and not do anything, but now it will open Neo. As you can see here, it'll default to the presets page. I'm gonna go over to edit, and here I'll take advantage of a few of the tools that I really love in Luminar Neo that I think it does so well. The first one is Structure AI. I wanna add just a little bit of that to the photo, but I primarily want that on the ground. So I'm gonna come in here, and I'm just gonna grab a brush, increase the size, and just go ahead and paint that into the base, uh, the foreground, if you will, of the photo. So something about like that looks good. Just wanted to give it a little bit of texture there in the foreground. There it is before, and there it is now. I'll close that tool. I'm going to develop, and over here, I'm gonna give it a small bump in exposure, but again, I just want this in the foreground, and here I'm gonna use a linear gradient and just kind of drag that across this section of 
just kind of the snow covered part of this glacier that we were standing on. You can always back out and see what's being affected. There's the before, there's the after. I think that looks fine. I might actually pull that back just a little bit. I don't want to overdo it, maybe about there. But again, quick and easy, just basically brightening a little bit of that foreground. I'll go ahead and commit that tool. One of my favorites in Luminar, of course, is Golden Hour. And here I want to apply that to the whole photo. It gives a nice warm pop to the tones. So it's a beautiful sunrise. I want to bring that up a little bit. Golden Hour is a fabulous way to do that. And while I'm working on color, I'm going to go over here to Color Balance, part of the Color Harmony tool. And here, one of my favorite things is just moving these sliders around and getting the colors and tones that I want. So I'm going to go a little bit warmer towards the red in the midtones, and also slightly toward the magenta. Now I love that, but I don't want it on the entire photo. So once again, the masking comes into play. I'll go to Mask AI, give that a minute to calculate. And of course, I just wanna apply this to the sky. I don't really want that tint on the snow. So I'm gonna click on sky. And as you can see, I mean, Mask AI, <laughs> it's basically found it nearly perfectly, right? So there's the before, uh, and well, let me back up. It's easier this way. So there it is before. And there it is now. I mean, this is honestly, it doesn't really get easier than that. So I just made some color tone adjustments, stuck mask AI on the sky and I'm done. So a couple of clicks and obviously uh, it's just doing all the work for me, which I love. And now I'm going to pop over super contrast, another tool in Neo that I absolutely adore. And I'm just going to make some basic adjustments here, which is really all just about getting the tones correct. So I'm just kind of looking at my notes. I'm going to adjust the balance on the highlights. I'm also going to slightly adjust the balance on the midtones and also slightly adjust the balance on the shadows. Just creates a little bit richer contrast overall. So if I look at the before and the after, again, just slightly richer, more contrasty photo, which gives it a little bit, bit of pop, also pops those colors a little bit. So if I hold down the backslash key here in Neo, that's before, or that's where I started, I should say, in Neo, and that's my current state. I'm really happy with that. And so this is where I want to send it back to on one. That's where I just click apply and it'll drop it back into on one in that true full plugin workflow. Meaning I don't have to export from Luminar and save it on my desktop and then add it back to on one. It just drops it back into on one for me. Does that full round trip. As you can see, it's coming back in and it will drop in as a separate layer on top of my base layer here in on one. And there it is, there's my new layer. So if I turn off this layer, that's what the photo looked like in on one, and then turn this layer back on, and that's what it looks like now that I've made a round trip to Neo. So this top layer is my Luminar Neo Edit. Now, as you know, there's also a lot of powerful editing tools in on one, so maybe I wanna go in and do a couple of more things. Here's where I would create a stamped layer. So I'm just gonna right click on this top layer, and I'm gonna create new stamped layer. I'm going to add this layer. It'll basically stick those two together and put it on top. The reason I did that is because I want to leave what I did in Luminar Neo alone. So any further edits I want to do to the photo, I want to do it on a layer above that. So I create a new stamp layer. So if, for example, I want to change that or delete it or whatever, I can just get rid of this stamped layer and not impact what I did in Luminar Neo. So I'm on this stamp layer and here's where I'll go in and do some additional customization. So I think the first thing I wanna do is slightly work on that foreground a little bit more. Now, my favorite way to do that is with local adjustment. So I'm over there, I'm gonna get the gradient and I'm gonna go with linear top. You've got various options here, of course. Linear top basically works on the bottom of the photo. It's a little bit counterintuitive, it seems like, but I'm gonna go ahead and twist this so I can get that lined up just right. I'm gonna collapse that gradient zone a little bit. Now it defaults to a negative one exposure. I'm gonna put it back to zero. I'm gonna brighten it just a tad, like maybe that 0.15. I can always further refine or adjust the mask if I need to or want to. Actually, might increase that gradient transitional zone just a little bit, but slightly brightened it. And I'm also going to experiment with the whites because it is snow. And I just want to see what it looks like if I add a little bit of white uh, there. So like a 10. Let's look at the before and after. Yeah, I like that. A little bit brighter, a little bit wider, a little bit more impact, a little bit more visibility. Now, I've already got that mask in place, and with local adjustments, you have all these various controls. So I actually might come in and just try a little bit more structure just to give a little bit more oomph to the foreground. I don't want to overdo it, but I think that looks pretty good. And I really like my edit here. I think the only other thing I want to do is just go ahead and get a vignette. Now, I could have done that in Luminar, 
but I prefer to do a vignette at the very end. And so I'll just choose to do it here in on one instead. I like the big softy, but I need to kind of adjust that a little bit. I tend to pull back the opacity and maybe change the size a little bit. I don't want to overdo the vignette. Something kind of subtle I like. Let me see, there's the before. There's the after, slightly darker around the edges. And I think that's really all I want to do to the photo in On1. But we're not done with all the capabilities of On1. Let's say I wanted to print this really large on that wall behind me and cover the whole wall. That's where the resize AI capability that On1 has now, which is built in, comes into play. I can go into resize. It'll first save my layers, but then it will open the resize dialog box and I'll get the options for enlarging this. And here we go. Now, if you're not familiar with Resize, I've got a video about it there. It's now fully integrated in on one, which is fantastic. AI-based enlargement, super intelligent, super powerful, super useful if you wanna go big, so to speak. Now, it's already a fairly big photo. I'm not actually gonna resize this and print it and put it on the wall, but maybe I will do that with some other photos. Um, you can see the basic pixel dimensions here, but I tend to come in here and look at percentage and instead of 100, which is the base original size, let's say I want to go to 3x. Now, before I move this, just look, it's 7752 by 4360. But when I 300 uh, or 3x the photo, it's now 23,000 pixels by 13,000 pixels. So if I look at my new dimensions, it's now basically 60 by 32. And that's because of the crop. It would typically be like a 60 by 40 roughly. But anyway, it's a 58 by 32. So nearly five feet wide. The point is not that I'm going to do this. The point is that I can do this. And of course, there's lots of other options here. Sharpening, film grain, tiling, and gallery wrap. I won't be getting into any of that. But it's there. It's powerful. Super useful if you want to go big. But we're also not yet done because let's say I'm finished with that and now I want to export. I've even got more options in on one for that. So click on the export menu in the bottom right corner and this dialog box comes up for export. You can choose lots of different things. You can rename it. You can add a watermark, that sort of thing. You can see the resizing was controlled by Resize AI, so I can choose to enable that or not. Sharpening, metadata, watermark. Like I said, if I wanted to watermark the photo, I could come in, add a watermark, do all kinds of stuff. Again, not necessarily doing that on this photo, but I wanted to point out, taking advantage of the power and the capability of these two apps together is, I think, massively beneficial to us. Amazing noise reduction up front, some great vertical controls, lens corrections, things like that here and on one. Pop over to Luminar Neo, amazing ability to do mask AI, apply light, detail, color where you want it, and really customize the look of your edit from a creative standpoint. Come back to on one and kind of finish up with some basic edits, local adjustment, whatever it might be. Resize the photo, export the photo, you can do all those kind of things. It's an incredibly powerful combination. That's how I'm using these together. And I'm super happy that now I can do that as a fully integrated plugin workflow. That's an example of what you can do together. There's obviously a lot of different options, a lot of different tools in each product. The point is they work great together. And honestly, you don't really need any other apps. These two apps can do basically everything you need to do. I love using them together. I will continue doing so. Hope this gives you some ideas about integrating the two and how you can take advantage of the power of both to get the result that you want. Thanks for watching, my friends. I appreciate it. I'll be back soon with more videos. Thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff, comments about feedback or ideas, and take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, my friends, adios.